Today, we're going hunting. What are we hunting for? Wild clay. Yeah. In the 18th, 19th century, potters were very common. A lot of people had to uh, have things for their kitchens, for their dining rooms. And uh, pottery was so very, very common. The potter, well, he wants his raw materials to be as close as possible, especially something heavy like the main body clay that he's using. So he's gonna be using a local source. And that's what we're looking for. Today, we're looking for a local source of clay that we can use as we're making pottery here on the channel. So we're doing some exploration. Well, here is the spot that I have been looking for. This is the creek down here that crosses this property. And uh, this particular piece of ground here, um, as we work a, a little bit east of here, it's a, uh, a, a wide kind of field between two hills. And you can tell that at uh, times past that it was probably a swamp, a bog, a lake. And now this uh, creek slash ditch is what it really is, runs through it. And it gives us a chance to look down through the layers of dirt because what we're looking for is secondary deposited clay. The kind of area we're in has uh, secondary clays, not uh, primary clays that sort of are disintegrating certain kinds of rock or whatever, but these are redeposited clays and they happen where water kind of slows down. So you'll get, you know, very, very fine clay particles suspended in water as they move down a, a river or something. They will hit a lake, they will hit two pieces of, of river come together, the water swirls, slows down, and those, those tiny particles float down and become a layer of clay. So we're looking for these layers of clay here. Most of this field is rich black dirt. That's what the top of it is. But we're looking for the clay that's down underneath. So let's start working up this uh, creek here and see what we can find. As I'm walking along the ditch bank, obviously I'm looking for something that that is going to be obviously a, a wonderful clay deposit. And in the past, I've I've found ones that are um, just really, really obvious. <laughs> you know, smooth uh, bodies of, of gray clay that had very little inclusions in it. Uh, this is going to be a little tougher. This is later in the year, uh, which is actually a good time for hunting. But, um, you know, it might be a little trickier to find really good deposits. So as I'm looking, here's a possibility. I'm going to take a sample from this spot in here. Let's take a look. Uh, this spot here has a, a an, like a crayfish hole or something. And you can kind of see the clay that's come out of it and dried. And we can see it's kind of cracky. Um, we're going to take a sample of this. It's likely that this spot isn't, isn't that great. Probably has a lot of rocks in it. What we want is something that's almost ready to use. Uh, but we're going to take a sample of this anyway. So I'm going to dig a little bit of this out. Okay, I've got a small sample from this spot. It's looking interesting, but at least here on the surface, it's got a lot of rocks, inclusions. It's got some uh, sort of, uh, um, let's call it organic matter that's in, built into this, which means it'll be a little bit more difficult to use and would need more processing. So we're gonna take a sample though to see how it fires out and we're going to keep looking down the bank. Now, so just down the way here, there's a spot where another little stream comes into this one. And I definitely want to check that spot because whenever you have two pieces of water coming together, you've got a good possibility of something interesting being deposited. So I know it's gravelly, but there might be some other spots that are more clay material. 
Over the years, the water course here has changed. Even in my lifetime, it's changed exactly where it flows. Especially because this area gets heavily flooded in the springs, and so sometimes you'll come down in the next year and it looks totally different. <laughs> so this is the kind of spot I'm looking for. Uh, normally all along this area, it's kind of gravelly, but there's this there's a stream that comes in right over here you can just see it it's dry right now it's a fall so it's it's uh, a drier time of year which is nice because we can work down and see farther down below the below the typical water line and this particular spot isn't very gravelly at all and i think as i dig down into this i might find some decent clay deposits uh, this is the time of the year to dig them out when you know, this area isn't this high in water instead of, uh, you know, where it, where, it, um, where it is in the fall now. And I think that this stream has changed its water course as it's come in over the years. And this was a back eddy pool for a while. So uh, this might have some decent deposits. I'm going to have to dig down a bit to really see what's down here because just uh, the first six inches a foot or so, I found some spots where there was like uh, sand, um, you know, sort of sand layers. I want to get underneath all that, see what there is here. So I'm going to start digging on this and we'll get a sample from the bottom of this pit. And luckily I know this area pretty well. So as we take samples, I got a pretty good idea of where they came from. Uh, definitely find some nice smooth material here. Again, we don't know what it's going to fire up like. Uh, you don't know until you put it to the test. But this could, as we dig back, um, you know, oh, if this sample works out, this would be a spot that I would really dig back into the bank and see exactly where it goes. But this sample will give us a, at least a test. Is this any good whatsoever? Does it fire up, uh, you know, quickly? Does it, is it hard? Is it soft? Is it something that would melt at too low a temperature? So we'll find out quickly. My guess is this would be a fairly uh, real low temperature kind of clay, but even those can have their purposes. So I'm gonna work back this stream here because I think that in the bed of this dry um, little stream, we might find something even more useful. That's kind of my primary place to go to right now. So I'm gonna work up this dry stream bed and see what we can find. So the really nice thing about this little tributary stream is that it's, um, it's much smaller and it's not, not really been affected as much by, you know, outside things, uh, you know, mechanical intervention, uh, people coming in and, and changing his water course at all. I don't know how old it is, but I know it's never been modified as far as I know in, in my lifetime. So it's, it's very, very uh, unkempt. We can walk right in the middle of it without any trouble. And we can really see as it's eaten through the layers of soil here, we can see what's going on. So this is a good spot here. The, the uh, level of the soil above me, the field level is about five or six feet higher than I am. So it's dug that far down through the layers of soil. We can see the, uh, the tree roots of this particular uh, tree here. I think it's a hackberry. Um, and it, we can see kind of down low, regular kind of looking soil for the first three or four feet. And then as we get lower and lower, we can see maybe a layer of clay down there underneath. It can be a little tricky when it's dry like this and very frayable, so it may be actually better than it looks if we kind of uh, dig into it. So let me come over here and take a look. Okay, so we get into the wall here, and yeah, it's very sandy. Uh, it's sort of clay mixed with sand right in this layer. But I think as we move down, we might get to a much better yeah that feels pretty good down there so maybe you can see six feet under the level of the field that's above me 
Well, it looks like there might be some decent clay deposits. We're gonna keep working up the stream though, because I think it's gonna get a little more obvious. Now, it, as we move up this particular stream, it gets a little more shallower and shallower, but we can see what's happening uh, in the, the bed of the stream itself. We got lots of rocks here. Not small gravel, but rocks in the, uh, you know, fist size, a little bit smaller and bigger, but right around that size. Um, we don't want gravel. That's definitely uh, messy to get out of clay, but a bigger one like this might not be much trouble. Let's keep working up here. I really like this particular stream bed because it's so undisturbed. I mean, other than <laughs> seeing the, uh, the wildlife tracks, uh, nobody really comes to this area. It's uh, hard to get to. There's no decent road access at all. And uh, so even this spot I have not visited all that much. But here's a decent look at what's going on. Let me turn around here. So here is a spot that's sort of like a rock dam that's above it. The water comes along, courses along that, and it's kind of made its own little cliff here and pool where it's churned up and made an extra deep spot right here. But right along the walls of this, we can see sort of what's going on. And we can definitely see that the reason why this hasn't washed away is because it's a dense uh, layer of clay. It's got its own um, amount of inclusions of rocks and whatnot, but it's still definitely worthy of testing out. Here's even a better spot to look at it. This underneath the roots here has dried and then got wet and it's busting apart and yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely looking uh, promising in that spot. So we're gonna dig some of this out. So I'm gonna take all these clay samples. The sample we're gonna get here and the other two samples, we're gonna take them back and fire them to find out exactly what they're gonna turn out like. If you want more about sort of the, the frontier pottery that we've been doing and uh, you know, the results of this, make sure to check out townsendsplus.com. It's the site where we do sort of extra things that we don't normally do on the YouTube channel. So uh, real fun content from lots of different uh, uh, creators here at Townsend's and, and a few others that aren't necessarily from Townsend's. So uh, we're really working on that and it's a lot of fun. So check out townsendsplus.com and thank you for coming along as we dig into what it was like in frontier 17th century 18th century 19th century america what was it like what kind how did they deal with the resources look for them uh i you know what was available to them and how they built america from dirt and sticks it's an amazing story again thanks for coming along i hope you had a great day and thanks for watching